She puts the wow, mmm, yum, into words. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie herself on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku. Here we talk about all the food happenings around Acadiana. If you like food, tune in. You might learn something new. Okay, the Super Bowl is happening right now. Maybe you're driving around in your car and you can't listen to the Super Bowl, or maybe you don't like the Super Bowl. So thanks for listening tonight if you're out there listening and not watching the Super Bowl. But I do really want to see the Lady Gaga halftime show, and Alan Higginbotham is guest co-host tonight. We were discussing that it's probably going to happen right as the show ends so I may get to see the end of it by the time I get to my parents' house in Scott. Not not exactly sure. But both of us were talking about that's kind of the highlight of the Super Bowl for us. Also, the commercials. I will say I, 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 I do love to see a, a, a Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> so thanks for joining us again, Alan. Thank you, Tiffany. Thanks for having me on. And he is the guy in the kitchen at Rev Coffee. And I have to say that you guys have stepped up. The food game Thank you. since you've you've taken over the kitchen and we're gonna talk about that a little later in the show. But right now we're gonna talk about Super Bowl food. Super Bowl food. Lady Gaga commercials, <laughs> food. 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 Gotta talk about it. What are some of your favorite Super Bowl foods? You know, my family always sort of did the um the family style Cajun stuff for a Super Bowl. So there was jambalaya, there was gumbo, you know, maybe a chili. Um I do uh, my famous artichoke and spinach dip every oh, year. Okay, for what, Super what Bowl. makes it famous? Uh, because it's just so good. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I mean, it's actually it's a pretty simple dip. Um, it's a hot artichoke and spinach dip that um, has been so popular with my friends and family. I've morphed it into a pasta dish. I've morphed it into a soup that I serve at the restaurant. So, yeah. Nice. Okay, I'm a fan of chicken wings. Mm-hmm. I like breaded or sauced. Um, so I feel like no Super Bowl party is complete without chicken wings. And also, I've never met a dip I didn't like. Oh, Super Bowl dips are the best. Yeah, like all different kinds, fancy to trashy. Right. I love them. <laughs> I love them all. But I do not like the seven-layer dip, which is funny because I like all those things independently as a dip, like the refried beans, the guacamole, salsa, sour cream. Like, I love all that, but together in dip form, I don't like it. I don't like, like the way it looks. It bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you a fan of the seven-layer dip? I am a fan of the sa- seven-layer okay, dip, so and it's I'm ironic because I don't like all those ingredients too much on their own. Oh, but combined, they're just magical. They kind of hit the spot. Absolutely. So Eater posted today that the mo- that they're hands down, they feel that the the best... Super Bowl food is jalapeno poppers. Um, I'm a huge fan of how can you not love jalapeno poppers? Okay, I <laughs> so <laughs> not being a fan of jalapenos, and I think for the longest time, one of the only places that served them, Sonic had them. And I worked at Sonic from when I was 16 until I graduated from college. So I've I've had a lot of time with jalapeno poppers right. <laughs> and cheese sticks. Still madly in love with cheese sticks. Jalapeno poppers. However, I didn't like the jalapenos. So I would eat the breading and the cheese and just leave the jalapeno. So to just go in and bite it, nope. But to the breading with the cheddar cheese and which is pretty much a cheese cheese stick. Would, would eat that all the time, dip it in the ranch that they serve it in. Yeah. But don't like the jalapeno. No, no, I guess I guess some people aren't a fan of jalapenos because, I mean, not everybody loves the spicy food. So Yeah, and it's, it's a texture okay. thing for me. I have weird texture things with certain foods. And I think now, like, I'll eat, what what is it that they do, like, the grill with the jalapeno and the cream cheese and they wrap it in bacon. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll eat those and it's fine. And I guess it also depends on the spiciness of the jalapeno. If it's a more mild jalapeno, I'll eat it. But if it happens to be a super spicy jalapeno, I- I'm kind of not for that either because I'm not a big spice person either. But ranch just makes everything better. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of just put it in the ranch dressing and, and go from there. Um So Eater also posted the most popular recipe searches for the Super Bowl per state. So for Louisiana, it was crab, shrimp, and spinach dip. So you're kind of you're kind of on par with that. Yeah, right. So do you ever put crab and spin and shrimp in your spinach dip, or are you a 
I'm, I'm a purist when purist. it comes to the dip itself. I've never altered my actual dip recipe, but when I do it as a pasta dish, I'll add protein sometimes, chicken or shrimp. I've never done crab, but that would be fantastic. You know who has an amazing spinach and artichoke dip? La Pizzeria. I, I can't always talk about it. I'm I so don't think I've ever had that. It. They put bacon grease in it. It's oh, got bacon well, in it. Oh, there you go. And it's got like this huge layer of cheese. And I like, so it, they serve it with tortilla chips, but I like to get the pita bread mm-hmm. to go with it instead and just get mass. I could sit there and eat that whole thing. I love that spinach and artichoke dip. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of spinach and artichoke dip of any kind. Cold, hot, you know. What restaurant has your favorite? I just put you on the spot by asking you that. Let me think about this. Okay, my favorite. Um, you know, I used to really like Copeland's because okay. they used to serve it with the, the little bow fried bow tie. Yeah, right, the right. Fried bow ties. Absolutely. And I think it's. I think a lot of times with dips, it's more about the sort of you know the accoutrement that come right. alongside it. Um, so they were definitely always a favorite of mine because of those little fried bow tie pastas. Those were fantastic. I feel like you could order it with celery sticks, and it would be low carb. And if you're doing a low carb <laughs> diet, it's totally okay to eat it. <laughs> In my head, that works. Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds that justifiable. So, and, and a lot of the other states that were searched, it was like cupcakes and chili and tacos and things like that. Uh, another one that stood out was Oregon, which was tater tot casserole, which that sounds good to me. It sounds strange to me. Really? I Just as a Super Bowl food, you know, like, I mean, a tater tot casserole sounds delicious. I mean, but. Well, I, I'm, I'm thinking of family reunions and tater tot casserole uh-huh. being there and so i'm thinking that it's like a get together and yeah family you know, style family type style thing and you want to bring a tater tot casserole and i'm also wondering what goes in a tater tot casserole besides just tater tots and i'm assuming cheese maybe maybe, maybe i'll google that yeah. on a commercial break and we'll because we'll i'm thinking like a, sure. a chili type ground beef maybe, maybe so. something or other but you can't go wrong who doesn't love tater tots i know tater tots are amazing <laughs> there's Oh, good. They are so good. Man, now I'm wishing that I... I wish we could have done this live from a Super Bowl party somewhere. I would be like, we don't care about the football. We're just here to eat. Yeah, we just want the food. (laughs) What do you like to drink for the Super Bowl? Are you a beer drinker? I'm a whiskey drinker. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a whiskey drinker. I would be too. I would be too. Or wine. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to do... You'd be more whiskey I'd definitely be whiskey. Yeah, definitely. What brand? Jameson, probably. Jameson. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're both Jameson. I don't know. I kind of feel like I would maybe even drink a beer for... You know, for the Super Super Bowl, Bowl. I mean, sure. Why not? Why not? Maybe some Guinness? I'm wondering how busy waiter is tonight, too. Like, I wonder if a lot of people are delivering. I wonder how many party trays were sold in Lafayette. How many cane strips. I saw... A commercial for that and I was like ooh Canes who doesn't love a Canes chicken strip I, I mean I, I think we talked about this last time and, I was on your show I am talk. a Canes fanatic so <laughs> so a few weeks ago we had Paul Credo and, and Tony from Poor on the show and we had talked about Eater had done this list of the most popular chicken nuggets and Wendy's won surprisingly mm-hmm. and I think Chick-fil-A was second like okay. McDonald's was no Chick-fil-A was third and McDonald's was second and I was kind of thinking, like, yeah, if I'm thinking of a nugget, yeah, absolutely, like McDonald's or Chick-fil-A, but chicken strips are kind of far superior. And it made me think of Raising Cane's, Stevens Fine Foods, um, even Hot Food Express has really good chicken strips. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you get, like, a, just a little nugget, unless it's Chick-fil-A nuggets, because those are just... Fabulous. Yeah, those are in a league of their Those own. are way bigger, better than the strips. Right. And... And, you know, just the uh, iconic nature of a McDonald's chicken nugget. But really, a strip is where, chicken strip is where it's at. Definitely. Yeah. And I've also heard, Jaquay mentioned this on last week's show, too. We were talking about my love of, of chicken wings, that there's a place in town that Smitty's that I need to check out. Cause, and she's not the only one. Like, I've heard it from numerous people that Smitty's has really good chicken wings. So I'm going to have to go. And check it out. I really want chicken wings now that we've I, been talking about chicken so much. I know this is totally anti-American, but I just, I, I am not a fan of chicken wings. What? I know, I know. And oh. I wish I was because, I mean, what a perfect little food. You know, finger food, you douse it in different sauces. Right? I mean, in theory, I, I wish, I really wish I liked them. Okay, we're going to have to convert you. All right, we are going to take our first break. And when we come back, we have more with Alan. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KBL. 
Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and joining us tonight as guest co-host is Alan Higginbotham. He is the man in the kitchen at Rev Coffee Roasters. What is your official title? I think I asked you this last time, too. Uh, back of house manager? Back of house yeah, manager. Yeah, but I do all the cooking there. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. That's what I thought. And this is like your dream. Like, you've always wanted to do this. Yeah, absolutely. So what does it feel like to have your dream come true? It's fantastic. I mean, I've worked for Nathaniel Johnson for seven years now. I ran his coffee shop in Eunice for, you know, the last six years. And um, he's a great guy to work for. And coming here to Lafayette and doing all the cooking has just been phenomenal. I mean, I love every minute of my job. When are y'all going to open, when is he going to open up a coffee shop on the south side of town? I know I had heard rumors that something was going to happen on the south side uh, a while back, but we need something, especially, so I have a tradition that on the Saturdays that I work at the day jo- day job, I go to a local coffee, drive through coffee place. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a chain. It's not local. And... However that experience goes in that drive through that morning <laughs> sets the tone of the day. So right. if it's a bad experience, I know the day is going to be bad. And if it's a good experience, it's going to be good. Well, this past Saturday, I went and I got to the fourth thing that I wanted for breakfast. And like they didn't have it. Like I, I was like, I want this. I don't. We don't have it. I, I want this. I don't. I was. And then I was finally like, What do you have? Right. And she's like, Well, we have this, this, and this. It just it happens to be, you know, everything that you're asking for, we're out of. And I'm like, Great. So I was like, This is what kind of day it's gonna be. Uh-huh. And then I, I was driving. I was like, Why can't they have a Rev Coffee on this side of town with a drive-through? Like that would also be awesome. I mean, I know he's always looking at options. <laughs> I, I know just that. Put a, so. Just put a little bug in his ear. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, Southside people would really like a drive through coffee shop. Just just do it. I, I will put that bug in his ear tomorrow. I Perfect. guarantee you. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so, so to wrap up the Super Bowl segment, uh, we also want to mention the best night to go out to dinner or to go grocery shopping is Super Bowl night. So if you don't like crowds for next year, keep that in mind. And then the tater tot recipe was sent to me during the break. And it's right. It has ground beef. It has celery, Vidalia onions, cheddar cheese, cream of mushroom soup, and cream of celery soup. So it's like a Campbell's soup kind of thing. And then frozen tater tots. So we kind of, it's like a creaminess. Yeah, that so doesn't now sound I'm like, I don't know if I, it's, it's a little more disturbing to me now. Right. Make it into a chili base and, and I'm all about it. Or maybe just make it more like a stuffed potato. Oh, there you go. With like the sour cream and the bacon. And maybe I would, I would like that. See, alternative. Right. <laughs> to what, to what they were mentioning. Okay. And then very exciting news is that Acadiana Grilled Cheese is doing a pop-up next Sunday at Tribe Collective. Uh, I think it's going to be from like 1030 in the morning to two in the afternoon. They're going to have some of their most popular grilled cheeses and it's going to be available on the gluten-free bread that they sell at Tribe Collective. Super excited about this. Yes. Have you, did you ever get to have a a grilled cheese? I love Acadiana grilled cheese and I can't wait to get my fix next week. Yeah, I'm I'm really hoping that that means that they're going to have boudin wranglers. Oh, yes. Did you have the boudin wranglers? I have, okay. yes. I don't think there's anything on the menu I hadn't had. Okay, really? Yeah. <laughs> so you've had more than I've had. I couldn't get past the boudin wrangler. And then, so when they had their brick and mortar location, they had hot dogs, and they were so good, and I would get the hot dogs too. So, if okay, the boudin wrangler, if you followed me for a while, you know my obsession with it. So it was like pepper jack cheese, boudin and a fried egg and then it was like smashed together and then they served it with like the wawi dipping sauce mm-hmm. like a crawfish dipping sauce and it was perfection oh my god it was so good it was so good i'm so excited i i really hope that and they had kind of been teasing at the fact that they maybe start doing pop-ups so i'm hoping that this continues to be a thing for them yeah i hope so too i hope so too super excited about that uh and i've been noticing Rev with Rev Coffee, you guys are so busy all the time now. Oh, it's been fantastic. I went yes. two weeks ago at night and it was packed in there and you wouldn't think a coffee shop would be that busy at night and you guys were and you you said it's been kind of crazy. It has been. It's been exciting. It's been exhausting, but it's been exciting. Absolutely. And 
so some new breakfast items. I saw some sausage. Mm -hmm. Doing a house-made uh, maple espresso breakfast sausage that we offer either as an a la carte item or I'm doing that also on our homemade buttermilk biscuits in the morning as a biscuit sandwich. Nice. Yeah. How's the response been to that? Uh, very good. Very good. Yeah. We also have, um, we have Christina Ostrom's um, gluten-free and vegan macaroons. Yes. For, have you had have those from good. Karma Caroons? Yes. Yes. And uh, Whitney McMurphy is doing our king cakes, okay. um, which are exclusive to Rev. It's a, uh, you know, traditional king cake topped with uh, um, um, an espresso cream cheese icing. Oh my God. These things you are You guys phenomenal. got a little shout out last year. The National Food Critic with Eater was in Lafayette and he had one of y'all's King cakes and he put it on Instagram. So you guys got a little shout out last year because of that king cake. I want to try it. I'll tell you, I know I'm biased, but I, I truly believe that that we have the best king cake I've ever tried. See, I so I did the whole whole thirty thing. So no sugar in the diet. Have kind of been putting more sugar than I should back into my diet. And last weekend was the first king cake that I had, and I had it from La Fille Saint La Saint Chien et Pain. I always mess up on the name because it's a really long name, but her, she makes my favorite king cakes. She did. We got a chocolate cream cheese, but I actually like her Satsuma cream cheese. Oh, wow. Better. Yeah. yeah, she does them. They're so good. But so many, we were talking about that last week, that so many different places now are doing different versions of king cakes, and I love it. I love how creative people are getting right. with it. Absolutely. And, and I definitely want to try. Are you guys going to have them after... I, I, I doubt Probably it. Probably not. Yeah, I doubt it. I still have time, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we have time for that. And then in some sad news uh, this week, East Kitchen announced via Facebook that they were closing up shop. And it was really sad because Paul Ayo is such a nice guy. He's He's always been a supporter of the show. And he's so positive. And I know how much he loved that shop. And, and such a great shop. Works. The specialty food items you could get there. Oh, my right. God, you know. So he's working on some pop-up locations to do some of his classes, which I really think he should do. And I think he should continue doing the cooking classes. Um, but it was just, it was so sad to see. I mean, it's always sad when your dream kind of dies. But And then even with it closing, he was remaining so positive about it too so it was good to see and i look forward to seeing you know what he comes up with in bigger and better things bigger hopefully. and better things hopefully uh i also checked out charlie's philly steaks it opened this week in the acadia mall it kind of replaced where quiznos was okay um being that i work in the mall uh we eat a lot in the mall and one of our big complaints is that it's pretty much all the same thing right. you have chick-fil-a <laughs> you have pizza you and you have like Japanese, Chinese, Thai, and then you have Great American Steak, which blows everything out of the water. And so now you have the corn dog place just reopened. So now we have a corn dog place oh, again. Okay. And then you have uh, the, the cheesesteak place that just opened, which is kind of the same thing as what Great American Steak was doing. Um, it was all right. It, it was good. Um, I found it to be a little pricey, and I feel like Great American Steak's Philly cheesesteaks are way better. They pile the meat on. They use the gyro meat that they mm -hmm. do with their gyros in it. And it's kind of like chopped down fine. And it, it kind of gets like a little bit of a crispiness to it. And then they just like pile on the cheese. And you can tell that they put the buns on the grill. And so it's got all that nice grease from it. <laughs> I mean, super healthy <laughs> food, you know, uh, on it as well. So I kind of prefer Great American Steaks. I always liked that it was a white cheese and not like Cheese Whiz yeah. also on Great American Steaks. Well, yeah. this place is doing that as well. They, okay. they do uh, provolone. It's provolone cheese that they're using. But yeah, that's, that's what Great American Steak does too. And they also have... Okay, so I need to try Charlie's fries because they have all these crazy different fries like they have chili cheese fries cheese fries cheese fries with ranch and bacon so they have that stuff so i'm gonna go you know try that out as well but great american steak has chili cheese fries and they have seasoned fries like the fries with a seasoning coating and so they use that and then it's like i, I think it weighs like 10 pounds right <laughs> like it's reserved for when you're having a really bad day <laughs> Are that you, happens a lot when you work in the mall. Are very, <laughs> are very sick. That's true. You used to work in the mall. Thirteen years. So you're yes. Very well acquainted oh, yes. with with the menus as well. I'm a mall food connoisseur. Don't you wish that food trucks would come to the mall parking Absolutely, lot? Absolutely. But I yes. don't think that they can. But I, God, I wish that they would. I really wish. 
And I mean, that's why waiter is so popular in my office is because we get so sick of eating in the mall. It gets very repetitive. And and then if you're trying to eat healthy, it's even worse. (laughs) Um, like this week I, I did the, so one of the Japanese is like a hibachi place. And so if you want to do healthy, you just get the meat and the veggies, no rice. And it's literally, you're probably eating a whole head of cabbage, like in the, in the chop up mix. Like it's probably a whole bag of coleslaw mix that you're eating, but it, Hey, it's, there's no carbs. Like, you know, it's good for you. That that's what you get to eat for healthy food there or at great American steak. I'll do a side of the chicken shawarma and like with no bread or anything and then hummus. And then I'm like, no pita bread. (laughs) Like do not put pita bread in there, but their pita bread is so good too. Great American steak is just, I love them. It's a great place. Uh, Yeah. I like them too. Well, the owners, they've recently resold. And so the owners opened up a new location called Zorba's on Oh, it's right by my house. Right. right. So it's the exact same menu. Okay. So if you miss it, if you miss Great American Steak from working in the mall for so many years. You can I was go going to go there for lunch today. And when I pulled up the, uh, the their site on Facebook, I saw they were closed today. So oh, I didn't no. get to try them. But yeah. yeah. Uh, and I've been hearing really good things, and it's the the place in the mall. So go check it out. Good but yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna che- I'm gonna check out the Charlie's fries and not write them off. But if you're looking for a cheese steak in the mall, go to Great American Steak. <laughs> that's that's my two cents on that. That's how I feel. All right, we are gonna take another break, and when we come back, we have more with Alan. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. That's all. The best tasting radio show in all of South Louisiana. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and we've been talking with back of the house manager, Alan Higginbotham, with Rev Coffee Roasters. Some of those PSAs are funny. I'm going to wear my dad shorts, my <laughs> short shorts, and do my dad dance. <laughs> they make me laugh every week listening to, to the different PSAs. It's pretty funny. Uh, I want to promo. There is a sushi class happening next week, February 9th at Whole Foods from 6 to 9. You can get some hands-on learning uh, on how to make sushi and how to roll your own sushi at home. Uh, it is $15 and it's from 6 to 9 o'clock at night. And you can go to the Whole Foods website to get more information on that. Perfect date night opportunity to the following week, which is Valentine's Day. Have you made sushi at home before? I have, yes. Okay, so uh, the rolling aspect of it is always terrifying to me. How did it go with you? I, it wasn't that challenging. It was super fun, and I'm really not a huge fan of sushi. What? Um, I know, it, and, and, and it's because you eat it at room temperature. Like, I really like hot food. You know, I really like okay. to eat hot food meals. Um, But, I mean, it, it was fun. It was a lot of fun, and making it, you know, yourself, like, I definitely tore it all up. I ate it all. But Did you use a special sushi rice? Oh or God! This was this was at least three or four years ago. Yeah. I, I'm gonna say yes. I think we, you know, pretty much stuck to the traditional sort of ingredients and methods. Okay, I'll have to. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of like my boyfriend's new to sushi. Like he hasn't had sushi until we started dating, and then he had it for the first time, and he liked it. Um, so I'm I'm curious to see what we're gonna learn to do at home to do at the class to see if it's something that we might want to do at home or not. Um, so. Well, we'll see how it goes. And then Valentine's Day is the following week. Um, I haven't had a boyfriend in a very long time. That sounded so horrible to say that (laughs) on the radio, but I did. And I remember thinking every time I would see all these restaurants, really cool Valentine's Day menus and be like, man, I really want to go to do one of those things but then at the same time not wanting to go because that's when everyone goes to the restaurant right um <laughs> so now this year i'm in a situation where i have a boyfriend and we can go and i'm like where do you want to go for valentine's day and he's like i don't know where do you want to go and we're playing like this game like what, what do you want to do but what do you want to do what do you want to do <laughs> so i have no idea what we're going to do and i feel like at this point like today i was like i think i'm just gonna cook dinner no, Tiffany, him. this this is your chance. <laughs> Seize this opportunity like, go to go out. to one of these restaurants that you've been wanting to go to and you pick it. Come yeah, up with I one. I don't want to pick it. That's that's <laughs> my that's the whole problem. Uh-huh. That is my whole 
thing. I have to pick restaurants all the time. To oh, eat okay. It. I, yeah. In my line of work, um, I, I don't like to think about when I'm off, when I'm off the clock. Right. Like, I don't want <laughs> to pick the restaurant. I want the guy to pick the restaurant. I want him to pick the restaurant. I kind of want him to pick what we're eating, too. I kind of don't want to make any decisions. Fair enough. Um, because I have to do it so much all the time. But I get where he's coming from and that he's wanting to pick something that I'm going to want to eat at. But I'm just like, pick a restaurant. <laughs> like, just pick one. Pick one. Um, I mean, what are you doing that night? You know, I, I, I am a chronically single man. Yeah. So <laughs> my Valentine's plans usually entail a large box of Godiva chocolates all for myself and a bottle of Jameson. Nice. Right. <laughs> actually sounds really good. Right? Look, it's fantastic and Valentine's night. Maybe Ben and I will do that instead. <laughs> you can't him, lose with that one. I'll make him dinner and then we'll just eat chocolate and and do that. So last Valentine's Day actually was the first time that I had the preservation chocolate, which is located at Rev. Mm -hmm. And he ruined me for all other chocolates. I remember he brought me a one little tiny chocolate heart to work so I could try it. And I was just like, this is the best thing I have ever, like, this is such good quality chocolate. This is so good. And then a few days later, the guy that I was seeing at this time had this really cheap box of chocolate that oh. one of his students had brought him. And he was like, oh, do you want one of these? And I, and I, and I like spit it out because I was like, <laughs> I can't even have cheap right. chocolate anymore. You've ruined me. I can only have the good stuff. And you say he's not, you don't know if anything. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I mean, you know, uh, Unfortunately, I I haven't heard for sure if he's going to be doing anything for Valentine's Day with that. But you know, I mean, hey, watch our Facebook. Um, I'm sure he he will be posting about any any you know specials he does with his chocolate because it is so it good. Is <laughs> it really, is so delicious. It is so good. He did uh, peppermint bark for Christmas. Oh, and chocolate and mint is my absolute favorite thing. I remember he made the mint chocolate cookies. And I was like, I am over there. He's I will been go working on um, out. on chocolate covered dry cherries lately. So oh. we've been we've been sampling all the you know like you the, the, the failed experiments. Right. And by failed experiments, I mean absolutely delicious chocolate covered right. dry cherries. I love when you'll go in and and Carter will be like, Oh, this one wasn't good though. And you're like, This is so right. Good. <laughs> what did the bad one taste like? <laughs> This is so interesting. Oh, it's one of the best things about working with all of these creative people. Like, I, I eat so much good food all day and drink good coffee. <laughs> so I was seeing, I was looking at this article online about alternatives to flower bouquets. You know, they have like the candy bouquets mm -hmm. and you'll see like the bacon bouquets. What would be your ultimate bouquet to get for Valentine's Day that was not flower related? Um, well, if, if there's a, if there's a such thing as a bacon bouquet, bouquet yeah. th that would definitely be a winner with me, but I'm a huge fan of chocolate. So, um, you know, you send me chocolates and I am yours forever. I maintain that a dozen Billy's Buddha pepper jack Buddha balls <laughs> is, is, would be the perfect bouquet for me. And I, I have been like, if the man that brings me that to work is the man I will, the next man I will marry. <laughs> Like that, that will happen. Like I've been waiting anxiously and I actually had a food blogger friend. I will say this. It's from Shreveport. She came into town and she brought me a Billy's Buddha. She, and she was like, oh my God, look at this line. I was like, yep. Cause it's good stuff. Like, right. you know, so I maintain a does like, that's my, my red roses. It's a dozen Billy's Buddha and pepper jack balls. <laughs> that's great. That would be great. Um, I don't know. Maybe the candy, maybe like. A dozen little tiny bottles of champagne. Yeah, might also be appropriate for me. A dozen bottle of ja bottles dozen of Jameson. Jameson. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the the opportunities are out there. Let's get to Pinterest, people. Right. Get creative <laughs> with your bouquets for Valentine's Day. I, I really don't know what we're gonna eat. I want to eat. I kind of want to do something Italian. Like, so I'm thinking. Like Imanelli's, Rufino's, maybe something like that. I kind of want to go somewhere that I haven't been or I haven't gone to lately. Mm -hmm. And it's in the middle of the week too. So that's going to kind of limit because I was thinking like had it been a weekend and we were off maybe going to the steamboat 
in oh, yeah. Washington. Yeah. You and I were supposed to go there yes, one we time were. and yes. it kind of yeah. fell through. Because yeah. I've never been. and You've you've still never been? No, I haven't oh, been. Oh, it's such a lovely I've place. I've met the chef numerous times and I still have not got to go. And it's on my list of places that I have to go when I'm off because of, you know, the distance. Mm-hmm. But what's your favorite thing on the menu there? Um... I don't know that I've. That is definitely one of those restaurants where every time I go, I'm going to order something different off the menu, and I have had. He does a lot of specials. There are, and that, yeah. that's what I was going to say. I mean, usually whatever their special is for the night is, you know, on point. I mean, the the places, the atmosphere is great. The service is always great. The cocktails are great. It's a really, really good place. I need to check it out. I need to definitely do. You give um, me a call if you need a date. Okay. I will be there with yes, you. Yes, we need to do this. And in fact, I'm like, where we should have been doing this singles Valentine's right. Day for you forever. should have been joining me for Jameson and yeah, chocolate. We could have went. We could have like each year picked a different restaurant that we wanted to go to. Missed opportunities. God, man, what were we thinking? <laughs> Um, and then, okay, so I'm obsessed with this grain-free tortilla chip right now that is available at Whole Foods. I have no idea how to pronounce the name of it, so I will spell it. It's S-I-E-T-E, and it's grain-free tortilla chips. They are so good. I, I've been getting the nacho cheese one, so it has the cheese and it has a little bit of spice to it. It's so nice. Like, I I was not expecting a grain-free tortilla chip to taste like this, and I believe they make it out of yucca. And it has no added sugar. So if you're doing like the whole whole food, paleo, low carb thing, you know, it's right up your alley for that. So good. I'll have to go so try those. You have to go check it out. Yes, They're absolutely. on sale right now. Too. Oh, even better. <laughs> I feel like I've been living at Whole Foods lately because yeah. I've been, well, with the special diet, it's, it's pretty, and it's on my side of town. Mm-hmm. It's the only place that I can go, you know, to get everything that I need, kind of. I went to a regular grocery store this week, and it was so depressing because <laughs> I'm still because I'm still trying to do it, but with, you know, writing about food, like, you have to, you know, eat out as well. So I went, and it was all fruits and vegetables and, like, pepperoni because I was like, that's still low carb, it, you know. So I was like, this is sad. Like, I didn't even, like, want anything, <laughs> like, no chips, Nothing, but it's it's sad, but it's good. Like yeah. that, I'm I'm, I'm having this dif- different eating, but it, it was so different. Just going to a regular grocery store for the first time and, and like not wanting anything in there. Whole Foods is a long way from my house, so because I'm really? I'm all the way on you know this in so the town. Be closer to in... Drug Emporium. Oh, or... absolutely, Rouse's. R- Rouse's. See, and somebody keeps telling me too. Rouse's has a good. Um, healthy food section as well. The one in Youngsville does. Okay. I've, I think the one in town not necessarily as good. I'm not. Well, you're asking the wrong sure. guy about you're healthy like, options. I don't care <laughs> about healthy options. Who cares about yeah. that? Give me bacon roses. Right. You know? Exactly. <laughs> All right. We are going to take another break, and when we come back, we have more with Alan. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on New Sock 96.5 KPL. From Boudin to the best burgers Acadiana has to offer, it's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPEL. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPEL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and we've been talking with Alan Higginbotham with Rev Coffee Roasters. I love following chefs on social media because especially around holidays, if, if they have holidays off and they cook at home. So Frank Brick, Brixton, who uh, is in, out of New Orleans, he's been a guest on the show before. He did smoked rack of pork with honey Chinese mustard glaze. Good God. For the, for the Super Bowl. That and then Bon beautiful. Appetit magazine it did like a taco bar with flank steaks and stuff. So it's been interesting cruising through social media on the commercial breaks to see what everyone is posting there with politics being such a hot button topic in social media lately. I know I'm kind of over it <laughs> as you yes, are. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's a little too much on the social media. It brought up the question, should restaurant owners or business owners in general, but since we talk about food, we'll say restaurant owners should restaurant owners be posting their political beliefs on social media? I think that's a really slippery slope because no matter what side of the coin you happen to be on, you're going to offend and alienate some portion of your clientele. So 
I, I just, I don't think it's a good idea to ever mix business and politics, you know? But we live in the day and age that everyone has a platform <laughs> to do it. And I see so many business owners out there doing it. And, and this was from, I saw something on online that somebody was posting about not going to these certain restaurants because of, of people's political beliefs. This is my thing. I like that the world is made up of people with different political beliefs. I feel like that keeps things interesting and keeps you on your toes for what you believe. And I, I like it. I feel in a perfect world, yes, maybe everyone would have the same beliefs about everything, but that's never going to happen. You're going to have people on both sides of the fence. Fine. Great. I, I appreciate that. However, there are some things that kind of bother me and those would be racial issues and issues uh, with women. So those, those are two hot button topics for me. So if I saw a restaurant owner post something that was racially charged or something against women, I would be upset about it. And I don't know what's upsetting, more upsetting to me, the fact that they believe this and I'm kind of appalled that in this day and age that there, there are people that are going to openly on social media post these, this, this, these type of things or the fact that I can't, I feel, I feel guilty eating at the restaurant, like, because I like their food, right. but I don't like their political beliefs and it kind of makes me feel icky eating at the restaurant and supporting them. So it's it's kind of like, it's really conflicting for me. And I don't know. And that's on both sides of the fence. Because I mean, you could have whatever view and you're going to you're gonna offend somebody. Right. And especially on social media, you know, I mean, obviously restaurant owners are going to have their, their opinions and their causes they support or don't support. And, you know, by all means, they, they should they should pursue that. But to put it out on social media is just asking for, because I mean, people just want to start arguments on social media, it seems like, you know? So you're kind of asking for the uh, the rise up of, of the crowd to start, you know, hollering and screaming. So I don't know. I'd be careful about that. But it, that goes along with, so take the politics out of it, but the restaurant owners that will on Yelp if somebody posts a bad review on Yelp, will then go off on that person on social media. And I've seen it on Facebook too. Yep. Like they've posted bad reviews on Facebook and they've kind of gotten cocky with with the person. So then it becomes like, is the is the customer always right? Which in reality, no, they're not. But as a business owner, do you treat them like they're always right? Or are you standing your ground and saying no? And then risking chancing of alienating people because of that yeah i mean i think that i think the best thing to do is take, take the high road be professional don't respond to things like that because i mean then they become sensationalized you know and people start to really pay attention to them and what's going to stick out on a lot of people's head unfortunately is probably going to be a the bad review and b the fact that you sort of went off and you know acted perhaps like a jerk so leave it alone. Let it just, cause, I mean, it's the internet. My God, in five minutes, everybody's going to forget. Well, and the, so <laughs> I, I wasn't even involved in this. I was friends with somebody on social media who posts a lot of politically charging things because they like to debate. And granted, that's great. I, and I understand that. My, my father is very much like that too. He loves to debate because he wants you to know what you believe and, and, and be a hundred percent sure of, you know, what you're believing. So he was getting back and forth with a restaurant owner and someone that else that was friends with that chef saw it because he they're, they're friends with him and then posted, doesn't these restaurant owners know that people can see what they're posting and maybe they're not, not shouldn't post that because I'm not going to want to eat at their restaurant. And then from that came another group of people that are now making a list of restaurants to boycott and Lafayette oh, because boy. of the political. I mean, that all came from that one section. And so I know it was a great topic. You know, I was like, oh, this is great. And the environment that we're in right now is so politi politically charged. I thought it was going to die down after the election. Right. It's not. I don't ever remember it being like this. 
Democrats <laughs> with the last election. And I'm not a big political person. You know, I like to talk about food. I want to see food and tasty made videos in my <laughs> news feed. I don't want to see all the all these politics. I want to see puppies and recipe videos. Like, that's what I want to see. Yeah, same here. Same but here. But it, it just, it kind of makes you think, like, as a restaurant owner, like, what is your responsibility? Like, y- you have freedom of speech, which is great. And I love that we have that. But at the same time, are you going to make people not want to eat at your restaurant? And are you okay with losing business because of your political beliefs? And I think that's what it comes down to. I mean, you know, because as consumers, I think it's also we have now this unique sort of window into what these business owners, what they think and feel and believe in. And so now we get to make the informed choice of, do I want to support this business because they believe this or they support this and it's a cause I can't get behind. So I guess that's what they really have to ask themselves is, are they willing to perhaps lose some clientele and alienate part of the population? Are they that dedicated to their cause? Right. And I feel like there's no right or wrong answer. No, I I agree. For that either, other than, I guess... In a way, with the social media, you kind of know people's true feelings, I guess. And that's because I, I don't know, for me, it was knowing that, that someone had this belief on the side of the fence, but then like seeing further into it. Yeah, seeing them do like, like a two page dissertation on like Facebook a, about that's it. That's like a, you, you just crossed the line for me. And now I don't know how I feel about you. And yeah, so that's kind of how social media has been <laughs> very much for me lately. <laughs> I keep saying that it's like my parents are fighting and I'm stuck in the middle. Uh-huh. Like that's totally how I feel. Like please bring back puppy videos and tasty right. made <laughs> videos. Yes, life was better when we didn't have, you know, insight into everyone's every thought. Okay, so we are we have some new restaurants that are opening in Lafayette. So Copeland's closed, and they had promised to open a smaller scale down casual location, which they are planning to open where uh, by Quiznos on at the intersection of South College and Johnson. So they're going to be over there. Maybe our fried bow tie pasta, come back. <laughs> spinach artichoke will be there. And uh, they said the more popular Copeland's items would be available on the menu. So I feel like that was one of the more popular items so that should be there it's probably the only item i actually and ever the went there for cheesecake? oh and the cheesecake of yeah, course the cheesecake yeah, absolutely the cheesecake. um and then taking over the old two paul's location is pot and paddle jambalaya so i know jambalaya and then uncle t's oyster bar is opening in scott and then this one I'm kind of excited about. It's German Bakery that's going to be opening at the intersection of E. Broussard and Johnson, kind of where the uh, Legends is over, well, in that Legends shopping center right there. Yeah, I heard about that too. I'm really excited about it. We used to have a German bakery a while back. Uh, it was called Eurobreads, and it was on Robley Drive, probably right next to where the Legends is now. They had that bar that was there forever. But it was there, and then they moved out by Karen Crow. Like, they moved way out there, and then they finally closed. So I'm wondering if it's those same people huh. that are opening a new location. And I'm wondering, I'm thinking about German baked goods. Do you have anything that's coming on off the top of your strudel? Yeah, right, right, strudel. But that's that's really about, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about well, German food. So Vienna... Vienna knees, I, I can never say it right. Viennese. 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 There you go. Thank you. So like the croissant actually has German roots and all those kind of bakery baked goods, the like Kugen Amon that I can never say pr- correctly either. I, I don't know how to say your food. I just like We just want to eat it, yeah, right? I just, just want to <laughs> wanna point at it and be like, yes, I do want to <laughs> say it correctly, but you know, I'm me and, and I mispronounce everything. <laughs> well, we're Cajun, you know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. we do the best we can. Alan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having again. me. It is always a pleasure to have you on the show. And I look forward, I've been seeing your soups on the, min- on the menu. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Are y'all doing like a soup of the week or is it just for the cold temperatures? Or? No, this is a permanent item. I mean, we'll be serving it for lunch, you know. Are y'all going to be changing it out? Yeah, 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 yeah. Weekly or yep. daily? Um, it, it, not daily. I, I you, well, I'd usually serve the same one for a day or two, so that if somebody misses it on the first day, they can come back and try it the next day. Cool. But, uh, but yeah, I try to switch them up pretty often, get a lot of variety out there. I need to get over there and, and check out your stuff. All right, that's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join us next week, Sunday at 6 p.m. This is Tiffany Deku on News Talk 96.5 KPL, and this is the Lafayette Food Junkie Show. Thanks for listening, and as always, happy eating, Acadiana.